GM, GM. I hope everyone is fully caffeinated and ready for some of the knowledge bombs that are about to be dropped on this panel. So yeah, this is from Board Apes to the boardroom and we are going to be chatting all things getting hired in Web3. So look, most people don't really know where to get started in this next iteration of the internet. They can see the potential, but potentially lack the guidance or the experience to break into the space. So Elise, Morgan, Victoria, what I love, you are all from completely different backgrounds, but you're all fully immersed in the space. So over to you, could you each give an intro to your own background and journey into the world of Web3? Elise, will we start with you? Yes, hello everyone, thanks for coming. So I wear three hats, the first one being Director of Metaverse at KPMG. It's a new role that I just started a couple of weeks ago. So what we do is we look at how we can build new business models using Metaverse-based technologies for the firm. And secondly, I'm also co-founder of Transhuman Coin, which is a DeFi project that funds science and technology projects that help us overcome limitations of human biology. And thirdly, also a founding member of a DAO called FutureDAO, where we fund climate and healthy longevity tokenized projects. And my journey into Web3 was by accident, actually. So I was a software developer back then, and I was looking for a new job. And I actually really wanted to work in machine learning. So stupidly enough, I, I started building a blockchain demo just to show that I could code. And so I posted this to my network saying, I was looking for a new job and here's this blockchain demo that I built. But obviously nobody reached out to me asking if I wanted to work in machine learning. But lots of people did work, reach out to me asking if I wanted to be a blockchain developer. So that's how I ended up being in blockchain, building blockchain-based applications since 2017. Wow, that's lots of hats. Um, I'm Vic Wells. I'm founder and principal at Alt Law. Um, I was on the corporate and commercial law Death Star for about a decade and then decided to completely uh, rabbit hole into the space. Um, what do I like about the space? I like everything. I like the community. Um, and that's probably the thing that makes me um, so happy to practice law in this space. Um, having nascent technology and having laws that don't necessarily fit that technology means that you're constantly um, working. You're constantly innovating in how you're applying the law. Um, there's a lot more policy development and um, engagement in how law should be created to meet the space. Um, law is necessarily a, um, a reactive force and it's a codification of social norms. Um, we have technology that, and we can codify things. So to me, um, the very nerdy um, uh, legal brain um, meets um, a very interesting nascent technology and just wants to play in it. Um, so I do that. Um, I have a fun announcement. I'm going to be joining uh, Alluvium as a general counsel soon, which will be really cool. Um, yay. <laughs> Um, and what else do I do? Oh, I'm on Lawfi DAO. That's a really cool DAO. We're experimenting. Um, we're playing around with what it looks like to engage um, with policymakers and regulators around how DAOs um, are an important element of our community um, and what it looks like for um, that, uh, that structure to have um, legal personality um, in lieu of the fact that it kind of doesn't fit um, what we currently have. And I'm going to stop speaking now. <laughs> Hi, my name is Morgan Stone. Um, I'm the founder of a company called Roo Labs. You might know our NFT project called Roo Troop. Uh, we are based around two main things. One, uh, over the last year, about Web3 jobs specifically. Um, we've posted over 1,000 Web3 opportunities to our community, helped over 150 members get Web3 jobs, even worked with brands like Time Magazine and DraftKings to bring their opportunities to the space. Um, but we're building the first on-chain job marketplace, which is, you can think a traditional job market with the ability to verify applicants' work experience, their job history, and their skills on-chain. And so my journey into Web3 actually had nothing to do with Web3 jobs initially. Um, that's just kind of where we ended up. Uh, I was producing and DJing house music in 2020, and I journeyed into the NFT space because I thought it was a great way to uh, build up my brand even more and finally monetize the music. 
quickly found out there wasn't much of a market for someone like me. Um, but in that time, got wrapped up in the community, got wrapped up in the PFP projects, got wrapped up in the utility-backed tokens, and that really piqued my interest uh, to the point where I was spending countless hours a day just immersing myself into the community, buying into different projects, and even landing my first role as a community manager with the project, where I found that I was really passionate about helping other people land roles in the community. And I realized that there wasn't really much visibility on both sides. There was a lot of talent, and they didn't know where to find employers to hire them. And there was a lot of employers, but they didn't know where to find, where to find the talent for their teams. And so that snowballed into, hey, let's start our own thing. Uh, that turned into Root Troop, that turned into Web3 Job Board, and eventually an on-chain job marketplace. So that's my journey. Yeah. In. I absolutely love like the diversity of backgrounds in terms of how the three of you have actually really emerged into this space and I love that you guys have used your sort of creative influence to start learning and improving that you, you've got a place in the world of Web3. Now, in terms of what you're seeing at the moment, like what Web3 roles are you seeing as the roles that are most in demand from your own individual angles at the moment and how would you advise people to go about getting started? I'll go with you. You're the first pair. You're, you're the first person on my left. You're going to be first choice. I talked to a lot of people yesterday at the panel, and some of you may be in this room right now. So I was doing a bit of a survey on what jobs people were looking for or what jobs people were hiring for, and the top three that came out were developers, community managers, and salespeople. So it seems like these are the ones which are in high demand at the moment. And in terms of how you could get into roles like this, I. I am part of this organization called Blockchain Australia Young Professionals. And everyone in that committee right now, we're all normies. We all came from normie backgrounds, but we actually transitioned into working in Web3 and crypto. And the way we all found um, a way in is that we still stayed in the area that we worked in. So whether it was software development, capital raising, uh, corporate banking or law, we managed to either stay within our companies or go to another company, stay in that area of expertise or the types of roles we still worked in, but managed to find ways in which we could work with, say, Web3 clients or crypto clients so that we could still use the skills that we know but not have to completely retrain ourselves and still work in the areas that we want to be in. Who is actually looking for a job? Raise your hand. One, two, okay, all right, there's a few. Um, I can't speak to um, the, the professions that um, you've just raised, but from a sort of a 50,000 point view, um, I think it's really important to stay curious and be really, like have a natural interest in what, you're, what it is that you're doing. Um, and that will guide your way into the space. Um, that and the fact that um, this community is so embracing, there's lots of opportunities to learn. Um, if you don't currently do the thing that you wanna do in Web3, um, this is a fantastic opportunity to go and meet a bunch of people. They're really friendly. You can go up and say hi to anybody and you can ask the question, hey, I'm really interested in doing this. Um, do you know anything about this? Do you know someone, can you connect me? Um, so I think just attending these types of events is really important because you um, are able to meet people that are like-minded, you get to understand like the variety and diversity of skill sets that are there or here, um, and you get to kind of have a little think about, you know, how does your current skill set map into Web3? Yeah, so running the Web3 job board for the last year has given us a lot of really valuable insights as to what is the most in demand. And right now, the top job is shockingly an artist. Um, behind artist, it's moderator for discords, and then a Solidity developer. After that, you've got things like collab managers, community managers, marketing advisors, so really stressing that marketing component that they both spoke to. Um, but I think there's a big misconception that the only jobs in Web3 uh, rely on development, and that's just really untrue. Uh, artist is by far the most in demand, and a lot of people got into this spa space for the art, and so I always find that really ironic. Um, so my tip to anybody searching for work in Web3, one, 
you know, shameless show, go to rootroop.com slash jobs. There's a lot of great opportunities on there. But two, squeaky wheel gets the grease. Um, you really have to be vocal. There's a lot of people that are hungry to work in this space. There's a lot of opportunities, but they're not just going to fall into your lap. So something we always say is provide value before asking for value. And that pertains to literally every single role in this space. You get into a community you like, you're passionate about, you start offering up your services. Don't do it for long, don't work for free forever, but show that you are capable. There's a lot of people that say they are capable of doing things, and it's just noise. So get in there and prove that you can, and then once you've proven that, raise up your voice and show that you actually want the opportunity, and then get after it. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of opportunities in the space. There's a lot of great Web3 job boards out there. Ours isn't the only one, um, but just know it's not all Twitter grinding and DMing. There are resources out there to help you. Yeah, I think that's really important to note because I think what we've found is that there is a bit of a misconception that you have to be a deep technologist to be able to make it in Web3 and that that needs to be the sort of point of entry. So one thing that we often talk about is just the importance of having awareness of what transferable skills are and what skills that you have that could allow you to really emerge and gain that point of entry into the world of Web3. So let, let's just talk to transferable skills and, and your own individual opinions on that in terms of how can people identify their own unique points of entry to make it in Web3. So where does work in Web3 going? What are the parallels between Web 2 and Web 3 that can contribute towards making you become an, an expert in the space? And I'll kick off with you, Victoria, this time. Let's mix it up a little bit. Okay, so parallels between Web 2 and Web 3. Well, I'm in a professional service. I provide advice. Um, I help projects, I guide them, and ideally um, earlier in the project life cycle for the, rather than later. Um, and I think that you know my skills map pretty easily because it's still collation of resources and people to achieve a desired objective. Um, so there's a fairly simple and easy map um, onto that. Um, but on a more broader um, perspective, um, there's many skills in Web 2 that map into um, Web 3, um, not merely in the development capacity. Um, <laughs> I can't think of ones that come to mind, but like marketing is very, like that maps really well. Um, and I'm gonna leave it there. <laughs> Yeah, um, so like she was saying, there are some roles which map over directly, right? Everybody needs a lawyer, everybody needs a CPA, everybody needs a Solidity developer to make their smart contracts. If you have that capability, it's very easy to find where you plug in. For the rest of you, it's not so simple, and I think the reason is because there's a lot of new titles in Web3, um, you know, even just pointing at something like Director of Vibes. Where the hell are you going to find that in the Web2 world, right? Lead janitor. I've heard that one. Yeah. That's good. And there's well, a lot of those chief popping up now. Officer. Chief oh, meme officer. Chief meme officer, yep. And oh, so God. I think that's the most daunting thing to people looking for work is they're like, well, I don't know what these, these roles entail because they've got such new titles. And so what we tell people is look at what you're doing in your day-to-day. -day. Look at what you do in your hobbies. Look at what you do in your current profession that makes you great at those things currently break it down into what skills go into making you great at those things. And then look at people in the space in roles that you wanna be in or think you wanna be in and break their roles down. Look at them and see what skills go into making them great at their jobs. And what you're gonna find is a lot of overlap. I mean, we've got 17 or 18 people on our team right now and that's ranging from people who are Solidity developers, web developers, uh, but we've got memers who are you know, graphic designers in their Web2 world. Uh, you know, we've got front desk associates who are now moderators because they are great at greeting people and they're sociable. And, you know, our community manager has got a marketing background and he's great at building communities. And that's all applicable outside of Web3. So once you just figure out those core skills and kind of translate over, you'll find a lot of roles that, that would fit in for you. Great points raised so far. So I will just cover the software development side. I know Morgan already mentioned, oh, and Pam and also Victoria mentioned, you don't need to be technical in this. So what I would say may not apply or be very relevant if you're not currently a software developer. But what I do see uh, in terms of where the market is going for jobs is there's going to be a lot of demand for software developers. There is some stat out there which says by 2030, we're going to have up to 80% shortfall in developers. So this is a good area to be in if you're thinking about a career change or if you're currently a developer. So 
the best developers or Web3 developers that I've ever worked with are really great Web2 developers because the same things that make you a Web3 developer are the same that applies in Web2. So things like clean code, design principles, design patterns are all the same in Web3. And it's really just about becoming a really great developer and learning a new Web3 tech stack. I think one of the key things that I'm sort of taking away from the dialogue is that learning and be keen and just like dive into the space. Like no one has going to have five, eight, ten years experience of anything. It's all about just rolling up your sleeves, getting your hands dirty and starting. Um, and Victoria, I love what you said about the importance of like communicating connections, using the, the power of community to really find your mark in terms of what your point of entry is going to be into the space. So thank you for that. Um, Morgan, I'm going to I'm going to throw this one directly to you because you are you're actually working hard to bring some much need innovation to the recruitment industry. So feel free to give your company a little show. Um, but I would really love to hear what you're actually seeing in terms of hiring processes in Web3, and if you could also sort of touch upon pay scales in Web3 as well. I think that that could be of interest to the audience too. For sure. Um, so first, hiring processes are completely different. Um, it's way more informal in Web3. You don't need to suit up for these interviews. You don't need to be so super formal and put together in what you're saying. You need to know your shit, absolutely. You need to have that come across blatantly, obviously, right? But you don't need to treat it like you're going into a brick and mortar Web2 business and you know, get suited up and get all nervous about it. You can have a conversation. A lot of these founders, a lot of these CEOs are degenerates at heart. Like, we're, we all got into the space for very similar reasons, right? And so, you know, get in there and show off your knowledge, but don't be fake. People can see through that. Um, and I think that's a big difference between Web 2 and Web 3. You kind of have to fluff up, fluff up your resume in Web 2. Um, you have to kind of act like you're going against some crazy competition. Here, everybody's starting fresh. It's very early. Nobody, like she just said, nobody has eight, ten years of experience on you, unless they're a Solidity developer, right? Pay scales, a little bit different. So I think there is a big misconception that everybody in Web3 is just making bank. Um, and it's very few people. And it's mainly at the start of Mint for NFT projects specifically. It's not even Web3 companies usually. And the reason for that is we're all startups. So you need to be aware that what you're seeing as the big headlines of, oh, these people just made a million dollars in 10 minutes doing this, that, and the other, that's not the reality. Um, you're going to have to get into the mud. You're going to have to build with a team. You're going to have to wear a lot of hats. And with that, there's a lot of opportunity on, on kind of the uh, long term Right In the short term, you might be taking a cut, unless you're working with a huge project that has a lot of VC-backed funding. Um, but you know, there's things like being a moderator in a Discord. You might just get a couple hundred bucks a month, and if you're working for an insane project, you might be getting 10 grand a month, depending on what they do. There's no standards yet, is kind of what I'm getting at. Um, we see a lot of data come in about what people are shopping roles for and what they're being accepted for. And there's a big discrepancy between the two. People will come in and say, hey, we're looking for a marketing manager for this amount. We see the data that comes in of what they actually accepted. Big, big difference. And so I would say just be very vocal about what you're expecting in an interview. Um, you know, Just like you may have some uncertainty about what you can ask for, employers have that same uncertainty. Brand new space. So if they come in with a number, don't be afraid to push back and counter them. Um, so yeah. A little bit of insight into pay scales and hiring. Can I jump in? You can. Um, <clears throat> one of the things I think is really important is to recognize the value that you bring to a project. Um, there is a lot of intellectual capital investment that goes into um, being a, an expert in this space. Um, and that's air quotes on expert because, yes, we all come from something else. So you need to be able to intelligently speak to how your um, expertise in a Web 2 or, you know, meatverse environment actually map over into Web 3. Um, the important thing is, like, a lot of these structures, a lot of these projects are brand new. So it's really important that you're actually doing your own research on your employer and the project that you're coming on to. 
um, they might not be there in six months. That's going to be pretty shit for you. Um, so doing your research on the project that you're getting involved in, um, knowing that team, having that interview, it's a two-way street, um, making sure that you recognize the value that you bring. I would just follow up on that and add in that, um, what, just completely lost train of thought. <laughs> Lovely. It's That's okay. beautiful. It's People, day two. Are you repeat, over? No, no, I'm not. I'm not dusty. It's, but, it's all you right. know, yeah. Um, it'll come back. Go ahead. Do you want to have a second to think? No, it's okay. Uh, I, no, that that is amazing. I think like that's really important to actually like know your own value as well. I think like you know it's good to get involved, but as well if you are working for like quite an established project, like I think you need to really like value your own time as well and your own knowledge and the expertise that you're actually you're actually bringing to a project or a business or a brand that you choose to work with. And you've remembered, I so got throw it. it back. It came back quick. Okay, um, it, it's it's about you know showing and doing your research about the project as well. Um, understand that you know there's probably a lot of people applying for these opportunities that you are and a lot of people do have you know great competencies they're they're fully qualified to do these things um, so the difference maker that I've heard from a lot of founders is that people just stepped into these interviews knowing their shit and wanting to be on the team there was a passion there was a desire behind what they were saying it wasn't just hey yeah I can do this and here's what I've done in the past and here are the numbers to prove it it's hey here's what I can do for you Here's this plan that I've already mapped out. Don't share all the secret sauce in an interview. People are sleazy, they'll take your plans. Um, but you know, show that you can apply your skills to their company specifically, and I think that'll go a very, very long way. That was brilliant. I'm, I'm pleased that came back to you there. Um, so, like Elise, you've obviously recently been appointed as Director of Future Technologies and the Metaverse for KPMG, which um, is, is just a really exciting appointment, so congratulations on yeah, that, woo. by the way. That's woo. nice. Thank you. Um, now, I know that you believe it's necessary for all businesses to be looking at future technologies, Web3 technologies, and how it's actually going to affect their direction for the future. Now, what do you feel like making that link between the real and the virtual worlds can mean for companies in terms of hiring and who they're going to be hiring in the future? So. What do these emerging technologies mean for the future of work, in your opinion? Hypothetically, if I was hiring for my team right now, the way I'd hire would be very different to how most people hire in these corporate companies. So I can't speak for other companies, but this is how I would do it hypothetically. I would take them through some very practical tasks, just as how I previously hired for software developers, we would get them to do a coding exercise, but I'm not necessarily hiring developers, but I do want them to do practical exercises which show me that they understand Web3 and they participate in it. So firstly, I would get someone to go in and mint an NFT. It will show me that they have a crypto wallet and they have a basic understanding of what tokens and and um, you know minting means. Secondly, I would ask them to log into some token gated metaverse like Decentraland and I'll tell them to describe to me what they actually saw in there so that I actually understand that they know what a metaverse is and they can actually access one when I ask them to. And then thirdly, I'd ask them to send me their .eth address because are you even in Web3 if you don't have a .eth address? No. <laughs> well, the lawyer. And then I would tell them what is the outcome of their int this stage of the interview by sending them an NFT and then embedding in the metadata what is the status and what to do next. That is cool. <laughs> so, I, so, you know, heads up, this is what's going to happen if um, in the future I am going to be hiring for anyone in my team. But what I am looking for in terms of the people and the skills that they have for any metaverse related ventures is two things. So Pam just mentioned about making that link between the real and the virtual worlds. I think to do that, you really need two things, which are commercial savviness, needing to understand the use cases, the practical use cases of metaverse technologies. And two, which is loving people, talking to people. You need to be close to the customer. You need to talk to them, lean in, and understand their problem very deeply. I have a hand up there.
Absolutely. Thanks for your question. If I understand it, you're coming from the viewpoint of, say, the whiteboarding interviews. They're quite controversial, especially when you're hiring for a developer. We're not necessarily, oh, I'm not necessarily looking at doing that. Um, I'm using that as, as an example of where you give candidates some practical tasks that demonstrate that they understand this area. But I do certainly agree that there's better ways to do things, and maybe we can have a conversation after this panel. Um, so the other thing I wanted to cover related to your question was around how are merging technology is going to change the future of work. So I'm just going to cover next gen AI and blockchain and how they're going to change the future. I believe that in a future where everything is on chain and we do have ubiquitous AI, that a lot of your back office functions will be made redundant. So things like HR, accounting, tax, a lot of this will be automated and it's not necessary to have large teams which overlook this area. Right, thank you very much. Now, look, just from that question there, I do think it is important to just like acknowledge what the the sort of the, the limitations were in terms of interviewing for Web2. I think it's important for the interviewing processes to also evolve. So thank you very much for, for bringing that question to the panel as well. But Victoria, you, how are you noticing a bit of a shift in the legal profession as we sort of navigate towards these new te technologies becoming more embedded um, in our lives and what impact do you foresee it having in, in your profession? Um, uh, so there's an author that um, spoke or wrote about um, the future of the legal profession and it's I think it's Richard Suskind. Suskind's the surname. He's like Laura's dead. Laura's are gone. Um, we're gonna need them. Never more. Um, and I don't see that that um, is the position. I actually disagree with that. I think that we are going to need uh, uh, lawyers and other professional services that support um, the, the building out of Web3. Um, how many people read their terms and conditions when they um, mint something? Oh, one guy at the back. Well done. <laughs> okay, well, we write them. We write them for you. No, but we write them for you um, because it's really important to actually know what you're actually getting into. Um, so everything down from like terms and conditions um, as in respect of like what you're minting and what you're producing and what you're buying through to uh, like you're still involved in commercial transactions people like you still need um, professional services you still need lawyers so um, we're here we're here to make sure that when you do a project you have enough runway you have your NDAs in place you have commercial and contra um, contracts um, you're thinking about your licensing so it's not a skill set that is going to go the way of the dodo um, it's very much needed um, now and it's needed earlier in projects so that you can help structure things particularly when you've got this ridiculous miasma of regulation that you need to navigate to get to market and this is a truly decentralized um, ecosystem we're not just dealing in singular um, jurisdictions of law you actually have to navigate through and around and across so it's a really important profession. I really love what I do. Um, it's complex, it's interesting, and the people are amazing. So I'm, I hope it sticks around. I, I hope I still have a job in like 20 years. Oh, well, it's the future. Well, listen, thank you so much for all coming in and being a part of um, this panel today. This has been amazing. This is such an important, it's such an important dialogue because there is going to be a huge talent shortage and we all want to be screaming from the rooftops to encourage as many people from diverse backgrounds to come into the space as possible. So if you are sitting in the audience and you've not yet embarked on your Web3 career, please do so. There are many different points of entry and I hope you've enjoyed the panel today. Thank you everyone. Round of applause for our audience, our panels.